Hi my loves, this is Sula from Soulshine. Today I want to talk to you about internal family systems, a practice which has categorically changed my life and which um, is an absolute key part of the work that I bring to my one-on-one -on -one programs um, and will also form a really important part of the Nurturing Resilience program that I'm talking about all this week. So I want to talk a little bit about what IFS, Internal Family Systems, is, um, why I believe it can be so powerful and, and, and really what we're talking about with IFS and how it works. So Internal Family Systems is a psychotherapeutic model. I am so grateful to have been introduced to it many years ago by my teacher, Sarah Powers. So I really came to this practice via mindfulness and self-compassion and they were like the perfect gateways um, to open into internal family systems because the mindfulness helps you understand what your kind of beliefs, behaviours, narratives are to notice them. The self-compassion allows you to respond to them in a way that is kinder, gentler, from a place of greater love. But internal family systems allows you to do that in such an amplified way because it allows you to really understand the absolute specifics of the origin of those wounds. So how did we come to have protection that manifests in the way of the inner critic, in the way of those limiting painful beliefs, um, in the way of, you know, even how things are manifesting physically in our body. Um, and also to understand what the wounding is, what the original wounding is. So it's like an amplified version of mindfulness and self-compassion. And it's why they all go together so well, because they all complement and support the deepening of one another. So in IFS, the understanding is that we all have self-energy and we all have parts. So self-energy is really that energy that you might have had um, moments of experiencing. Uh, you know, when you meditate, when you come out of Shavasana at the end of yoga, that, that sort of sense of calm, of space, of connection, of all seeing. You know, when you just have those glimmers where you have like this perspective, this lightness to your sense of being. And within that, we are able to access more clearly uh, or with greater ease our compassion, our curiosity, our nervous system is in a place of calm, of safety. So we all have self-energy, um, but for some of us, it's become more obscured than for others. It's become more kind of, um, yeah, obscured, sort of, there are, there are, barriers to us accessing our, our self-energy and those barriers are from the parts. So we all have parts, you know, there's, it's very familiar in our language to say like, there's a part of me that wants to do this, a part of me wants to do that, um, a part of me wants to go to the gym, a part wants to eat pizza and have a glass of wine, that kind of thing. I'm sure it's very familiar for you, um, that language. And we all have parts, right? Everyone has parts. But what we work with in internal family systems are the parts that have taken on um, adapted roles because of what's happened in our life. So within our parts, we have two different kinds. We've got, um, I'm going to keep it on the, the most simplified version of this for now because there are, there are certain kind of different layers to it. But the most simplified version is we have our wounded parts, which are known as the exiles. And we have our protector parts, and within that we have what are known as managers and firefighters. So let's start with the protectors. Um, the protectors are there to really um, either habitually or in a moment rush in and stop us from feeling that original wound. Okay, so the protector might sound like an inner critic, the perfectionist, uh, that voice in your head that's always judging you. Um, similarly, it could be the part that, that we find we keep doing things we feel that we don't want to do. Um, those protectors can take many forms, but let me give you an example. Um, it's just a made up example, but kind of pulling in from lots of clients. Imagine you had a little child and they just started school and when they started school because of perhaps the way they spoke, um, maybe they had a different accent or some kind of um, something about how they spoke meant that the other children were cruel or unkind and really picked up on that and bullied them about it. So what happens in that moment, say this is a five-year-old child, 
this is a five-year-old child and this is now a wound. Now, on the surface, this wound for the child could be shame, embarrassment, confusion, sadness, fear and anxiety and worry about it happening, like the more it happens, the more it might happen. So these are all things we can really connect to. Underneath, we connect into our more primal um, and kind of ancient um, system, our nervous system, which is inherently geared towards safety and connection. And so when that's ruptured, that sense of safety and connection, what happens is underneath there's a, there's a fundamental perceived threat to our very existence. And it sounds dramatic, but honestly, this is how our nervous system perceives it. And this is how our system adapts because of that perception. It becomes life or death. So when we talk about trauma and people are like, I didn't have trauma in my life, my life wasn't so bad. And yet there are these really highly adaptive behaviors. It's because of how our system perceived it when we were four, when we were five, when we were 11, when we were 12 years old. And, and if we touch into a certain kind of wound, then the nervous system and the system will perceive that as life-threatening. And so it will do everything possible to ensure we never feel that again. So this is where a manager comes in. So you've got the wounded part. The moment that happens and that perceived threat arises, the system goes, no, that's not safe. We've got to stop that. And so a manager spontaneously also arises. So another part like gets given this job or evolves into this job. And it really is like having a cast of characters within you. If you've seen the movie Inside Out, it's basically like that. So this manager is basically, the job is to keep this part, to keep us from feeling the pain ever again, because that pain feels like an existential threat to our survival. So it might do that with the beliefs of keeping that child small, meaning they don't speak out, meaning they don't say things, they keep themselves small, they keep themselves hidden, they, they don't project themselves, they, they hide in their life, okay? But a four or five year old can't strategize that. And so instead, what this protector does is it uses whatever it can to give that effect. And what that might sound like is, you're so stupid, why did you say that? That was such a stupid thing to say. No one cares what you have to say. You know, can you see that difference? That actually, this manager, the only way it can protect is through these kind of words and beliefs and what we commonly call our inner critic, okay? But that's the key thing, our inner critic right there, you can see, is taken on a job to help that system survive, that child survive, that's how it perceives it. And what happens is this will just keep going on for all eternity until we bring it to um, to awareness. And for some people that's not so dramatic, you know, it might not be such a big thing, it might not play such a big part. But for many of us, this system and this protection can really start um, impacting our life, especially the older we get. So we might get away with it in our childhood, in our teens, in our 20s. By the time we're 30 and 40, this protector's now been working for like 20, 30 years and it is exhausted. Imagine working a job for 20, 30 years that if you stopped doing it, you would believe that you would die and you're doing it all alone. Right, it's a tough job, okay? <laughs> and that's why we often reach this point when we're like late 20s, 30s, 40s, where we're like, <gasps> I have got to, I, I can't do this anymore if something has to change. And so really what we want to do in IFS is first we'll get to know the protection. Okay, so we want to map out what all the different protectors are and we want to map out what the beliefs of those protectors are. So when did they arise and why? What was the fear at that moment of what might happen if they didn't do that job? And here's what's really beautiful um, in, in my opinion about IFS. In many therapies, from my experience, um, you know, there can be a lot of understanding from our mind. We can understand why we are the way we are. You know, this happened and that happened and that meant this and that meant this. And that's great, but it only takes us so far because we're not actually getting into our body. And in IFS, we actually go and we talk to the body. It's it's quite bonkers. Anyone, <laughs> any of my clients you speak to will say, well, the first time I did this, I was like, what? But at the same time, 
every single person when they first connected and spoke to their parts, or rather their parts spoke to them, even though they're like, that was crazy. It was also just completely true. There was not, there's never been a shred of doubt about that. Um, so the difference with this is firstly that we're getting into our body and we're really through this kind of meditative process and this self energy that I spoke about, we're connecting to our parts because we can connect to our parts when self energy is present. And that's part of my role as, as you know, your guide when you do the work with me. The second thing I want to say about IFS and how it's different is oftentimes if we recognize there's something there, we feel we can overcome it just by knowing it. So we're like, oh, we know that, so now we're gonna do it differently. However, if you understand that the manager is there to basically save your life, or that's the perception, to save it, it, the perception that if it didn't do the job, um, and often the dialogue, if you ask a protector, you know, what the fear is would be like, I'll be alone. And then what is your fear of what might happen? Um, no one will love me. And what is your fear? I'll die. So these are the kind of fears we're talking about. So if we have a protector, like if we have an inner critic, or if we have a part that is protecting us by making us eat, overeat, for example, or if we have a part that's protecting us by stopping us from developing the healthy habits that we would really love to embrace in our life, if we just keep trying to push them away, it's always going to have like loads of tension because that part that you're pushing away is basically going, oh my God, if you push me away, we're going to die. And so it's always going to be like this, like this force against each other, the force of this will of this, like, trying to bring in a new habit and the force of the part that's like, it's not safe. It's not safe to stop doing the job I've been doing. The difference with IFS is instead we welcome in the part and we go, wow, you've been working so hard for so long. And we're there for it with love and compassion. And we also help it see that this system has moved on because oftentimes our system is also stuck in the past. It will think that it's still four years old and it's still vulnerable as four-year-old children are. And so we want to help that system come into self energy, which is like this adult reparenting loving energy and recognize it's safe for them to do something different. And that's really key because when the system feels safe to do something different, rather than this forcing against each other, it relaxes and it steps back. And when it steps back, because it trusts the system, not because we're telling it, but because it can feel the trust, then we can access the wounded parts. And then we can help the wounded parts be witnessed with love and safety in the way they needed when the wound arose. And we can bring that wounded part to the present where it can also be met again and again with love. And so it becomes like this cyclical process that the more we meet the wounded parts of ourselves and meet it with love and compassion and safety and whatever it is that those wounded parts of us needed at the time where the wound arose, then the more the protection can relax and, and, and really understand it's possible to be um, a different way. So this is IFS and it really is, like when I talk about transformation from the inside out, I'm genuinely talking about going deep into your unconscious system, talking to it and working with it collaboratively with love because all of it is welcome. And, you know, I've worked with clients who've been through some immense trauma and parts that can feel so dark and so scary to connect with. And all of them, all of them are love. All of them ultimately come back to this protection, this fear and this you know, this desire to, to keep the system safe, no matter how um, challenging the experience of that may be, no matter how cruel the words may be or the actions they may take, they're all love. And so if we meet them with love, there's often just such, oh, such relief in the system. I can't tell you. It's just, I've witnessed this again and again, and it is just the most beautiful thing to see how a system can like, exhale with relief. So when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, a big part of it is doing that process, like meeting the system, meeting 
the protectors meeting the wounded parts. And then the other part of it is really integrating that because we can do the work in the one-on-one, -on -one, but the integration comes really down to every individual because the system needs to trust these changes. And that comes from daily stepping up, stepping up, stepping up and reminding the system it's safe, it's there. So um, an example I often think of is, you know, I have a very strong perfectionist part and um, I always say I'm a perfectionist in recovery <laughs> because that's how it feels really for me. And that perfectionist part, through doing this process, I was able to see it and I'll share with you so you can understand the perfectionist part um, needed to achieve, needed everything to be perfect. And when we wonder what the fear is of what might happen if it weren't perfect, I close my eyes to connect in then to my system. Behind it, the perfectionist is protecting a shame wound. And my shame wound really is something I have to nurture so deeply and so regularly. And my shame wound is one that says, I'm not enough, there's something wrong with me. And, and so the perfection is trying to protect from the shame. And so when my perfectionist part activates, which it still does, um, not as much, but it does still activate, Part of this process isn't just like it's all healed and sorted, it's me recognizing and being there for it in the way that in the way that it needs. So in a moment when perfectionism arises, you know, I might feel often it's in my chest and I might just notice and because I've met it in the body, I know that that feeling is my perfectionist part. And I can be there and I can say, it's okay. It's funny, actually, I had this just on a podcast recently and I, I got very nervous before and I could feel it. And I was like, it's okay. No matter what happens, no matter if we make a right old hash out of it, you're safe, you're loved. I will love you no matter what. And that wounded part is safe and is loved and is loved no matter what. So even though there was still the reality of having to go and do something and hopefully not screw it up, my system understood there wasn't like this survival threat associated with it. Nurturing resilience, we're really going to get into exploring in the group part, this aspect of internal family systems, mapping the system. If you do the one-on-one -on -one work as well, we'll go deep into the healing of the system too, in a way that's really only possible in that one-on-one -on -one environment. But what I have seen from working with many people on retreats is that even just understanding and witnessing the mapping of your system can bring so much relief and can bring so much insight. You know, so many people who like when they understand the role of their inner critic, like, oh my gosh. And the other aspect of nurturing resilience, because I really developed it for my one on one clients, is having the tools to not only be there in the way I just showed for that perfectionist part, but actually to be there in a nervous system perspective. So to have the practices, you know, and I'm just demonstrating some of them now, that really can help you. So that's instantly calm my nervous system that can help your nervous system know that you're safe and that's really what gets ruptured through our life the feeling that we're safe emotionally and physically and that's really what I want to help each of us find our way back to and not me doing it for you but me helping you do that for yourself I hope that's been interesting and helpful for you today if you'd like to connect about Anything I've spoken about here, I'm always so happy to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening.